I'm Paul Doggy Lounge and you are watching Alte Daily. I'm a dog groomer, pet groomer actually. I groom cats and dogs, animals basically, make them look nice and fresh. Actually, I, I got uh, I got like a, a couple of Lassa Absols, really small, cute, furry dogs. And there was a problem with me cutting them and making them look nice. So I had to like learn to do it. And by the time I was done learning, I had a lot of tools and people started to ask me to do this for them. and. That's kind of how I was born. A lot of people don't understand why I charge so much, even though they cost so much. But I try to to make it, I don't know, like a round figure as much as I do with the lassas. But if you want something extra like dye, special haircuts, we'll have to charge you extra for that. But general grooming is about the same. Because I run a mobile business, mobile grooming business. And right now, traffic is crazy. Yeah, so it's kind of hard for me to get to from one place to another place and groom as much dogs as I would normally groom if I was in one place. But I mean, I prefer it to being in one place, but that's it. It's a lot of work. I mean, it's really, it's really about the mentality of, of the people here. Not a lot of people know about dog grooming and people that know don't really know as much as they need to know about it. So first you have to educate the people that own the dogs on the whole, the nature of the whole thing, the whole process, how, why you have to do it and you know, then to get them to form the habit is another thing. A lot of people like to bathe their dogs. I mean, it's good to bathe your dogs, but it's most importantly, you need to comb and brush and, and comb and brush the dog more than you have to bait the dog. Because when you bait the dog more than you comb the dog, the dog tends to tangle. And that's a problem. It can cause infections and other things under the skin. Ideally, when the dog is dirty, it's time to give it a bath. But it depends. If it's white, you want to bait it every week to keep it white. But if it's, let's say, black or brown or not so dirty, you can do like once in two weeks or three weeks. But don't do too much because if you do too much, you strip the oil from the dog and it becomes dry and cause problems. But what you have to do is just a behavioral um, replacement, right? It's easier with a, with a crate, like a cage. What you do is, when you can't see the dog, you put the dog in a cage. But when you can see the dog, like when you can actually look at the dog, as in when you are seeing the dog, you let it roam. But if he wants to pull, you would know because you would like, would like turn around a bit first before it goes. Then at that moment, you either stop it. Because me, sometimes uh, my dogs can be doing like some funny business like around the corner. So I have like a command for them because before I get there, they can do whatever they want to do. So I have a command to stop them from doing that. Then take them out. So if you can do this continuously for like, for a smart dog, if you can do it for like a week and a half, it should learn to do it wherever you want it to do it. Cats are crazy because they're unpredictable. They just go wild when you scratch, bite and do whatever they like. They really don't like people. <laughs> no, I used to have a cat, but not anymore. I have two Rottweilers, six dogs. Wow. I can't really say I have like a favorite breed of dog. I just like different dogs for different reasons. For example, poodles are very smart. So are collies, German shepherds as well. But to me, my all time favorite dog is the Rottweiler because they're balanced everywhere. Brilliant, low maintenance, obviously. Then very loyal. Very loyal and they're stopper dogs. The Alternative Network.